Welcome to Electron Line, and here in our next chemistry series, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about what we call periodic variation. Now, the reason why we devote pretty well an entire chapter on periodic variation is because we can tell a lot about the atoms and about their properties simply based upon where we place them on the periodic table. Now, there is a reason why we call the periodic table the periodic table, because by looking at different periods and the different periods on the periodic table are basically the horizontal lines going across so this would be period one this is period two this is period three period four and so forth as i indicated here to the left and based upon what period the atoms are in they will have a certain property certain size certain electronegativity certain charge relativity and so forth so all we can tell a bunch of things about the atoms simply based upon on what period they are and also quite often where they are left to right in which column they belong to so we're going to draw some generalities between different properties of atoms and where things appear in the periodic table and so simply by looking at the periodic table and finding out where they are we can usually do a lot of things also, when we remember from the previous chapter where we talked about the quantum mechanics of, uh, mechanics of the atom, where how the electrons were structured around the atom and how orbitals are filled in what order and so forth, from that we can usually associate a lot of uh, properties of the atom with that as well. And we, can, we will see that in the next so many videos here. So in our first video, we're going to talk about the atomic radius and how that is relative to where on the periodic table we find our atoms. Now what I've done here, and this is simply something you'll find in most textbooks, is made a graph uh, where on the vertical axis we have the size of the atom and the horizontal axis we have the atomic number. So there should not be any overlap here going from left to right because obviously for every atom it has a different atomic number which is associated with the positive charge in the nucleus. So for example hydrogen which is first on the periodic table, which has atomic number one, only has one positive charge in nucleus. Helium, which is the second um, element on the periodic table, has two positive charges in the nucleus. Lithium, which is right here on the graph, is the third one on the periodic table, so it has atomic number three, and therefore it has three positive charges in the nucleus, and the, the same number of electrons around the nucleus. So for every positive charge in the nucleus, there will be one electron in orbit around the nucleus for a an, an atom that is not charged, that is not ionized. So, now take a look at the period for, it would be the second period, it would be the second row here on the periodic table, called the second period. And on the left side we have lithium and on the right side we have fluorine. We did, um, we did ignore the noble gases because it's very difficult to determine the size of an atom of a noble gas, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, so far, we're just going to look at the, the atoms without the noble gases. And so when we look at the second period from lithium to fluorine, notice that the atomic size, the radius of the atom or the atomic size of the atom decreases from lithium to fluorine. So you can see that if you go from left to right, the atoms become smaller, or you go from right to left, the atoms become bigger. So we have uh, big on the left side, and we have small on the right side. Then also notice as we go from the second period to the third period, which is this, the third row here in the periodic table, we find that the atoms are larger than they are in the second period. So by dropping down to the next period and the next period, the atoms appear to be getting larger. We see the general trend is still there as you go to the right. The atoms uh, become smaller from sodium to chlorine. Notice there's a big decrease in the size of the atoms. but Starting out at the left side, you know that sodium is bigger than lithium, potassium is bigger than sodium, rubidium is bigger than potassium, and cesium would be bigger than rubidium, and so forth. So by going down the periodic table, we find that the atoms are bigger, and then when we go from left to right, we generally find that the atoms become smaller. Now the question always would be, why is that? Well, one, for one thing, as you go down, further and further down, you're going to have more and more electrons in orbits around the nucleus in, I should call them orbitals, more than orbits, of course. And uh, so, of course, they, the electrons, they repel each other, so they need to take up, take up more space. So there's a, a counterbalance between the forces 
of the, the force between the negative electrons and the positive nucleus, the nucleus tries to draw the negative electrons in closer because opposite charges attract, of course. But as the electrons get closer and closer together, they tend to repel each other. So it's kind of a balance between the nucleus pulling the electrons in and electrons themselves re repelling each other, keeping them from any closer. So wherever that balance is, that's typically the size of the atom. Now, of course, there's also something to be uh, taken into account. For example, if you have electrons in the second energy level, they're going to be partially screened out, as we call it, from the nucleus by the electrons in the first energy level. So there's a shell of electrons that are inside, uh, just around the nucleus, and they have a second energy level where electrons are around it. And so they don't have that direct visibility to the nucleus because these electrons on the inside are screening them out. So the effectivity uh, decreases. Now, the more electrons you have in there, the more screening you're going to have. And that's going to affect the next energy level, the next energy level, and so forth. But notice also, as you're putting more electrons in the second level, or you put more electrons in the third level, those electrons don't screen each other out because they're in the same energy level. So they don't necessarily block each other from the nucleus. So as you put more and more electrons in the second level, for example, they're at the same energy level, and you get more and more protons in the nucleus, these electrons feel a stronger, stronger pull without being screened out by each other, and so the, the atom will become smaller, smaller, smaller as you put more electrons in around the nucleus in that energy level. And that's why you have this tendency, as you go to the right on the periodic table, for the size of the atoms to become smaller. Here again, the size of the atoms becomes smaller because all the electrons here are in the same energy level. They don't screen each other out, but they see more and more positive charge at the center, and therefore they get drawn closer and closer to the nucleus. So we have this tendency in each period for that to happen. Now once in a while you have something like this where zinc is a little bit bigger than the atoms to the left and to the right on the periodic table. And here we have indium, which is a little bit bigger than the atoms to the left and the right of the periodic table. Why is that? Well, that has something to do with where the electrons are placed in the 4p level and the 3d level, the 5p level and the 4d level. There's some interaction between the electrons there, and we'll take a closer look at that in some later videos. Here, I just want you to understand the general principle that as you go down the periodic table, down into the period, so of course, if you go down the periodic table, you end up going to the right here on this chart. The atoms get bi the bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you go from left to right, which is from left to right on the periodic table like this, you can see that the atoms get smaller, smaller, smaller. As you go to the right, they get smaller. Go to the left, they get bigger. Go down, they get larger. Go up, they get smaller. So the general tendency and the periodicity of the periodic table relative to size is precisely that.